you should be testing the pH and the chlorine levels in your swimming pool if you're using chlorine as a disinfectant several times a day and when it comes to chlorine there are three pieces of information that you should be recording onto your swimming pool testing log sheets. The three pieces of information that you need are the levels of free chlorine, the levels of combined chlorine and the levels of total chlorine. With free chlorine what that refers to is it's the amount of chlorine disinfectant that's in the water that's free and available to attack and kill biological pollution such as algae, fungus and bacteria etc. You need to have enough of it to be able to, um, to achieve that. So for example in a typical swimming pool the levels of free chlorine uh, that's recommended is somewhere between one and three parts per million. This assumes that there's no secondary disinfection systems such as UV or ozone. For spa pools you need a bit more. Uh, the levels of free chlorine recommended for a spa pool are between three and five parts per million. So what you do is you test for free chlorine with a DPD-1 test and we'll cover how to do that in another video. But when you've got your result of the amount of free chlorine that you've got in the swimming pool, what you need to do is to follow that test up with another one to find out how much total chlorine you've got. So the test for free chlorine is called a DPD-1 tablet test. The test for total chlorine is the DPD-3 um, tablet test. And what you'll find is in most swimming pools the level of total chlorine will be a little bit more than the level of the free chlorine because what what the diff and what you're looking for is the difference between the two um, the difference will be the amount of what's called combined chlorine because what's happening is in a swimming pool there will be ammonia in there typically there will be ammonia in there um, the ammonia is there due to bathers bathers come into the water people get into the water and they end up introducing sweat and urine um, and that basically then breaks down into ammonia. So in a, in a typical swimming pool you will, you will have some. In well managed pools not very much and at, certainly at the beginning of the day before people have started using the pool um, you might have zero. Um, but what happens is, is there is a reaction that takes place between ammonia and the free chlorine. Um, they will react and form chloramines. That there's three types of chloramines: there's monochloramine, dichloramine, and trichloramine. But in pool water testing, we just lump those three together and just call it combined chlorine. And combined chlorine is what it sounds like: it's chlorine that has combined with ammonia. And this combined chlorine is undesirable. You don't want it because yeah. It's basically responsible for all of the negative things that you tend to associate with chlorine. So a strong chlorine smell, um, stinging eyes uh, and skin irritation. All of these um, things are to do with combined chlorine rather than free chlorine. Free chlorine tends to get a bad rap or chlorine in general gets the bad rap but, but it's actually um, the byproduct of the chlorination process that's the problem, not the chlorine itself. So what you need to do is to keep your combined chlorine levels as low as you can get them because there's no benefit to combined chlorine. It, it, although it's still called chlorine, it's not a disinfectant anymore and, and so it's, there's really no benefit to having it in the water. There's just pure downside to combined chlorine so you want to try and try and make your best efforts to eliminate it really. Um, but before you can do that you really need to know how much of it you've got. Uh, but there's no test directly on combined chlorine. The test is on total chlorine. You only really need to know total chlorine so that you can work out what the combined chlorine is. 
um, because it will be the difference between those two. So, for example, if you have a if you're doing a test and you get a free chlorine level of two parts per million, let's say, um, and you follow that up with a this this will be on a, a DPD one test, but you follow the DPD one test up with a DPD three test to find out how much total chlorine you've got. Let's say you've got 2.5 when you do the DPD3 test. The difference between the two, 2 to 2.5, 0 0.5, that's the amount of combined chlorine. So that will be recorded as 0 0.5 parts per million of combined chlorine. What you want, there's an industry best practice uh, standard here that you, you, you want to keep your combined chlorine, the, the, there's a two parts to this, keep it less than one or less than half of whatever the free chlorine happens to be according to which one of those two things is lower. So up here you've got less than one or less than half of the free. So for example, if you've got a free chlorine of 1.5, well your target to get your combined chlorine level um, below would be 0 0.75, since out of these two, 0 0.75, which is would be half of the free, if the free chlorine was 1.5, that's less than 1, so you'd use that as your target. Whereas if it was a spa pool, for example, that was operating with a, a free chlorine reading of four, well, half of the free there, if you've got a free chlorine reading of four, is two. And you wouldn't want two parts per million of free chlorine in that scenario. You'd want to use this one, the top one here, less than one as your target. So you'd want to keep the free chlorine reading at uh, four but have the total chlorine reading at, at no more than five, so the difference between the two will always be less than one. The way to achieve that, the best way to achieve that, is actually to focus on prevention rather than cure or mitigation. Uh, the prevention is pre swim showers. That's the single best thing that you can do to, to con keep control of uh, combined chlorine, because it will also be controlling bacteria and other other aspects of pollution as well because it's here you if you if you can sort of address things at this point you'll be better off um, in the long run so get pre sim showers that are working the right temperature that are conveniently located between the changing rooms and the pool and encourage people to use them if you end up with high combined chlorine levels that you want to control that you want to bring down and reduce don't make the mistake of adding more chlorine uh, don't try and get your free chlorine um, level up um, to try and correct high levels of combined chlorine. You'll just end up with more combined chlorine because free chlorine will react with the ammonia and form combined chlorine. This process here, that's always happening as long as there's ammonia there for the free chlorine to combine with. So don't just keep dumping free chlorine in. What you need to do is focus on diluting the pool and getting more fresh water to go into the into the pool to dilute out the the combined chlorine levels. A common saying is the solution to chemical pollution is dilution. So get plenty of, of fresh um, mains incoming water into that pool to keep your combined chlorine levels under control.